Hey guys, welcome back to Clean Spore Abrasives for our 15th episode of Tech Talk. I'm Landon Eisenhower. I'm Danny Burnett. And so today we're changing it up a little bit on you. Um, we're going to be talking about large diameter cutoff wheels. And then later on in the episode, we're going to move into a discussion on an all new product here at Clean Spore that we're pretty excited about. So that, that'll be more on the actual coated abrasive side. And so then later on in the show, we're going to answer some questions regarding uh, some applications and some things you've sent in over the weeks. Um, so if you have a question, if you're watching live and have a question you'd like to send in, uh, please send those questions in to techtalk at clingspore.com and we'll answer them as quickly as possible and we'll maybe even on the air if we have time. Yeah. So Danny, tell us about some cutoff wheels. All right, so on the previous episodes, you know, we've done the ultra thin cutoff wheels and we've talked about all the different sizes and diameter and thickness and all that stuff for them. Um, the one thing, you know, that we are really popular for here is our large diameter cutoff wheels. So to me, like for us, that means 12 inches in diameter and up. Um, so we do have a variety of them. So we've got ones for the gas powered saw. We've got ones for your stationary machines and ones for your low powered chop saw. So the ones for the gas powered saws, whenever you're going to buy these, you want to make sure you stick to that name. So we actually have it labeled out, you know, cut a fill for gas powered saws. The reasons why you want to make sure you stick with that name is just because we have that extra layer of that Teflon inner layer to give it that stability for, especially with the horsepower that those, um, gas powered saws are running at, but we do have those. And then we've got, excuse me, we've got ones for the stationary cutoff wheels as well. And, uh, <clears throat> well, so one of the questions I get often is what's the difference between a stationary chop saw and a low power chop saw. And for what we've got here, based on our cutoff wheels, it's all about the horsepower. So four horsepower and up, that's going to be for your stationary machines, you know, less than four horsepower. That's going to be for your low power chop saws. And the low power chop saws is the main thing that we're talking about today. So we've got in that we've got our A330 in, A630 in, and A930 in. So our A330 in, those are 12, 12 inches and 16 inches by 1 8 inch thick with that 1 inch arbor hole. And then our A630 in is that 14 inch that's a 3 30 seconds in thickness with that 1 inch arbor hole. And then our A930 in is the 14 inches thick with the uh, 1 8 uh, 14 inches in diameter, excuse me. 1 8 inch thick with that 1 inch arbor hole. So that's just so many numbers I just threw at you. <laughs> um, but what I'm getting at with that is, so our main ones that we sell here is, our, is for a low power chop so is our A630 in and A930 in. So when we're going into those, the A630N, being at that 3 30 seconds, it's going to be meant for your speed cut. So it's going to be able to cut really fast. But on the other end of that, like you don't want to be cutting something that's, you know, greater than an inch thick because it's going to take a little bit longer to cut through it because it's not really meant for it. It's meant for that speed cut. It can't handle those larger pieces that you're going through. So something that's one inch thick, you really don't want to go into that. So my rule of thumb that I go with is if it's three quarter inches thick or less, the A630N is a great cutoff wheel for it. Or if it's those hollow pieces, they, they can cut through that really quick. And then on the other end of that, we've got our A930N. So this one right here, like I said, is the 14 inch by one eighth inch thick by one. And so that is, that can handle those one inch, <clears throat> one inch thick material that you're gonna be cutting through. Like it can handle the angled steel a lot better. It's, it's meant for those cause you're gonna get that longevity. And the one great thing with the uh, low power chops is cause your goal is to get that wheel and have that thing last for a long time because you never know when you're going to have to use it. Um, and so this is why these are two top selling cutoff wheels. A is because 14 inches is usually the most common size that you're going to have out there for those low power chop saws. And then we've got that variety. So if you're cutting through thin material, you want to go with the A630N. If you're cutting through thicker material, you want to go with that A930N. Um, but it's really enough of me talking about it. We actually have a video for you. So check this out. Danny Burnett here with Clean Spore Braces. So we're going to talk about our three versions of low powered chop saw wheels. You have the A330N Extra, the A630N Supra, and the A930N Special. These wheels are rated for a chop saw with less than four horsepower. So now let's take a moment to look at these wheels one at a time to see what makes them so great. The A330N Extra comes in 12 inch and 16 inch and is a universal wheel that can cut through solid and hollow material. With its grain size and build-in stability, it is a fantastic choice for cutting general metal, steel, and stainless steel. 
To sum it up, the A330N has a fast cut, low temperature end cut, and stability. If you're looking for a 12 inch or 16 inch low powered chop saw wheel, this is the wheel for you. The A630N Supra Fast Cut comes 14 inch and with its tight grain structure and making it 330 seconds inch thick, is the fantastic for hollow pieces or thin pieces less than three quarters of an inch. This is to be used on general metal, steel, and stainless steel. With this wheel, we also added some key features to make this our top selling low power chop saw wheel. Not only will you get a fast cut, this wheel also offers reduced heat. So to sum it up, the A630N has a fastest cut, low temperature end cut. So if you're looking for a 14 inch low power chop saw wheel to use on material that is less than three quarters inch thick or hollow pieces, this will be the wheel for you. The A930N Special comes 14 inch and is a universal wheel to cut through solid material. With its large grain size and built in stability, it is a fantastic choice for cutting through material greater than three quarters inch thick. You can use this on general metal, steel and stainless steel. If you are looking for a 14 inch low power chop saw wheel to use on material that is greater than three quarters inch thick or angled steel, this would be the wheel for you. With the three different versions of low power chop saw wheels that we offer, you'll be able to find the wheel that you want for the cut that you need with a Clings 4 low power chop saw wheel. So that video right there, it is it's such a cool video because it shows the differences between the A330N, the A630N, and A930N. <clears throat> and I know I've been promoting a lot of the A630N and A930N. I'm not trying to take away from the A330N because that is a great cutoff wheel. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I harp on these is just because 14 inch is the most common sold low power chop saw cutoff wheel that there is out there. So that's, that's why these are usually my bread and butters. <clears throat> But the biggest takeaway that I'd want y'all to take from this is that, you know, if you're cutting through thin material, go ahead and go with that A630. And if you're cutting through thicker material, so we're looking at one inch and up, go ahead and go with the A930N. But let's be realistic, in a real world shop, you're going to have a variety of different, uh, different pieces to kind of cut through and you don't want to be changing out wheels. So I, for that right there, I usually do tell people to go ahead and go with the A930N just because it can handle those uh, thicker pieces and it can work better through that compared to the A630N on that. So if you're doing a variety of different ones, please just go ahead and just do the A930N because you're still going to get that quick cut. You know, one of the things we had talked about, you know, in previous videos before was what this grit structure means. So you're still looking at aluminum oxide you're still and a uh, 30 grit and then a, pretty much a uh, softer bond. So that's what all these are right here. The only big difference to these from the 630 and 930 is that thickness but you have to remember with that thickness comes the stability that you're looking for so that's why the a930n can handle those thicker materials because as you're pushing in to get that quicker cut because we all know all of us are really heavy-handed anyway so we're trying to push down we're trying to get that cut quick that's why that a930n will do a better job on those thicker materials now if we're doing hollow pieces or really thin material yeah the a630n that's just just a great one to kind of go for on that but um so for these right here you know if you're interested in getting these cutoff wheels uh, please reach out to us. We do have a number coming up on the screen right now, but reach out to us. We'll see if we've got a local rep in that area. Just, just to kind of give them a try and just see kind of what you think about them. And honestly, we love your feedback. So, you know, if you want to reach out to me, feel free. And that way I can get your feedback and get more knowledge on it based on out there as well. So that'll, that'll help out a whole lot. But, um, so really when we're looking at large diameter cutoff wheels, burrs can happen, right? Mm -hmm. So Lennon, Give me some, give me some of this new material stuff that, that, that we promised a bit ago and then talk to me a little bit about this deep burn. All right, so yeah, anytime you're cutting, it's pretty much impossible. Even with the thinnest wheels, you're gonna have a burr. Um, so the first thing you really need to do is determine what kind of machine you have. So if you're doing slack of belt sanding or working on a soft contact wheel, you might wanna, we call it a J-Flex, but it's mm -hmm. a flexible belt. You might wanna stay in that realm of belts. Um, if you're working with a serrated contact wheel or just want the most aggression possible, um, one of these belts will probably interest you, and that's going to be our all-new ceramics. Um, and it's all new, like I said, and it's going to be more aggressive, and it's going to last a lot longer than the previous material. And so the first one's going to be the CS920. And basically, it's just going to be your ceramic aluminum oxide, and it is going to have that multi-bond lubricant on the top, which means about 20% you're going to keep the temperature down, and it's going to be a green color. Um, so some of the 
applications. Basically, it's going to be for any heat sensitive metal and in particular stainless steel. It's going to be kind of your go to material. Mm -hmm. And again, that's the CS920 and we offer it in 24 to 80 grit. So all your aggressive grits, deburring grits, um, it's going to be a good belt for you. On the other hand, its counterparts, you have the CS922. It's going to be the same ceramic aluminum oxide, so it's going to last longer, be more aggressive, all that good stuff, except it does not have that multi-bond lubricant on the top. So it's going to be red in color. And so anytime you're looking for the most sheer aggression possible, um, this new grain is, is going to be uh, the best bet for you. And we offer this one in 36 to 180 grits. So we have um, a wider variety of grits, and it's going to be uh, specifically for hard metals, carbon steel, tool steel, anything like that. So all new materials, we're really excited about them. So get them while, while you can. <laughs> That's right. New ceramic, hoo hoo. That's good stuff. Um, so big part of that right there. So whenever we're using these all <clears throat> these large diameter cutoff wheels, you know, if you get those burrs, which it, which it is going to happen, you know, um, yeah. every now and then, I'm not going to say every single time you're going to, but as it heats up and the metal heats up and you're cutting, you're going to get those burrs. Um, and that's the reason why in the market, a lot of people that buy these large diameter cutoff wheels, they go ahead and buy these belts. So that way they can, as soon as they get that cut, they get that burr removed. So we do have an image of a burr popping up on screen right now. Um, but when it comes to burr removal, the big parts of this right you need to think of is you don't want to go too low in grit. And the reasons why is because your whole goal is just to remove that burr. You really don't want to remove any of the metal. And so let's say if you're trying to make pieces fit together, if you remove too much metal, then it's not going to fit right. It's not going to work well. Mm -hmm. So honestly, for the grit range on the low end, you could be at a 60 grit. On the high end, it's about a 120 grit. And a good part to that is, say, you know, if you're using like a non-ferrous, <clears throat> that's where you just let that 120 grit. That's a good one for that because it's not going to really remove as much metal, but it's going to deburr and clean that up. And then, you know, if you're on the carbon, steel st or carbon stainless steel, any of that, like, there, if you've got those birds, go ahead and uh, you can hit that 60 grit and that 80 grit and they will go ahead and clean that up. But a lot's going to depend on the pressure you put on too because you don't want to just jam it up to it. Just barely put it up to it, let it get those birds off of it, make it a clean look, and then that's going to be a, a good part for it. Um, so we really got a video kind of touching yeah, base on video. everything we've, uh, we've talked about. But really pay attention to, you know, how those cutoff wheels work. Kind of look at that speed on them and then they're there in that look how this new ceramic that we've got kind of cleans that up and makes it look good but here's a video check this out hey guys welcome back to clean spore abrasives i'm landon eisenhower i'm danny burnett and today we have another exciting video for you we're going to be cutting angles into a steel bar using a low power chop saw. And you'll see we have a, uh, an assortment of wheels in front of us here. They each kind of bring something different to the table and they all have their certain uses. So mm -hmm. Danny, if you wanna expand on that a little bit more. So the first one we're gonna talk about is your A630N. It being a 332nd inch cutoff wheel, you're able to cut through material that is three quarters inch thick and less, or hollow pieces, which is pretty much what we're about to do today. It's a very versatile cutoff wheel, I guess you would say. So whenever we're looking at having to cut thicker than three quarters inch, we're having to look at our A930N. So this cutoff wheel is an eighth inch thick. So it is meant to cut that angled steel. It's able to cut the material that is an inch and greater. So with these cutoff wheels, you're able to do a versatile amount of just different kind of cuts. Like I said, with the A630N, three quarters inch thick or less, you're able to get that really good cut in. If it's greater than that, you can go with the A930N. So with this project we're about to do, our whole goal is to talk about cutting angles. So for me, I'm going with the laziest way possible. And I'm gonna talk about how to cut a 45 degree angle to make it into a 90 degree angle. So for a steel that we've got, I went ahead and drew a 45 degree angle. So whenever I cut it, I'm able to flip it and make sure these joints line up perfectly for it. So that is what we're doing. And we're gonna build a spectacular rectangle, potentially to be a picture frame, which will be amazing. All right, so let's just get at it. For this cut that we got, we used the A630N. So we did get a great, quick quality cut, but it did have a few burrs on it. So now we've got to clean these burrs off so we can get the joints to go together so we can make this spectacular rectangle. 
Um, so, Landon, tell us about the sandpaper that we're going to use just to deburr this. Yeah, so it's it's an all new product here at Clinkspore that we're really excited about. It's a new ceramic grain. It's going to be more aggressive and it's going to last longer. Um, so the one for the application today, it's perfect for any carbon steel or mild steel is going to be our CS922. Um, and it's just going to give you the most sheer aggression. And like I said, it's all new ceramic. Um, another one we're coming out with is the CS920 and you'll notice it's green. It does have a multi-bond lubricant over the top, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep the temperature down about 20%. Um, and that's going to come in handy, especially when you're working on heat sensitive metals, um, such as aluminum and stainless steel, especially. So stainless, when it gets hot, it likes to kind of blue over, which will add a step into your process. So this lubricant will keep that down and you won't have to worry about that for heat sensitive metals. Good deal. And so for this right here, we're using closer up to the higher grits just because our whole goal is just to deburr this. We do not want to remove anything of this right here, just the burrs. So that's why we're going with the higher grits and then we're going to get these cleaned up and see if we can get these joints together. So after we got the cutting and the deburring done, we actually have our nice rectangle. So for this right here, I know you're probably like, what are we gonna do with this? Um, could it be a picture frame? Who knows? Uh, but our whole point of this was actually showing that those angles. So for, for me, like I said, I took the easiest way possible and I cut the 45 degree angles. So that way I can have the 90 degree all the way around it, which made it so much easier. And then after that, Landon deburred it up and made it uh, made it look yeah. good. So anything you want to kind of touch base with on for deburring with that material? Yeah, it's just very fast and efficient, and very clean cut as you can see there. Um, so yeah, we're really happy with the new ceramic belt. Oh yeah, good deal. And so um, for this right here, we had our A630 in that was, as you can see from earlier in the video, it was able to cut really smooth through it and it actually cut through it really fast, this being a hollow material. Then, you know, for the A630N is a 330 seconds thick cutoff wheel, so it can <clears throat> handle that and it can handle it and cut through it really fast. So that was, uh, that was a big thing to it. So thanks for watching us make our spectacular rectangle. I'm Daniel Burnett. And I'm Landon Eisenhower. So thanks for watching and see you next time. So with that video right there, one of my favorite things from it is looking at that speed of cut with that A630N. So we had that hollow material and that material going around the edge was about a 1 8 inch thick. So we've seen how quick and how fast that was able to cut through it. So for a takeaway from that video, for me, you know, being in charge of our cutoff wheels here, that was such a huge display right there. Just watching how fast it cut through and how clean everything looked afterwards. So, but what about you? So other than the initial testing, I really hadn't worked with the ceramic that much. So mm -hmm as using it in that scenario i was just amazed at how fast and effortless it was granted it was just some small burrs but i thought it performed really well okay that's all you can ask for and it's left a really good shine and everything so that's true so i mean you know don't hesitate to, you know to try our cutoff wheels and then our new ceramic this that's a that's a mm -hmm. big part to it um any if you have questions so far please send your questions into tech talk at clingsport.com we'll try to go ahead and get them on there if not then uh we will email you back the answers that we've got for it but now it's the promo time. So, <clears throat> huh? Oh, um, so it's the promo time. For this right here, we want to give thanks to our customers and we want to do a 50% off of our A930 and an A630 and low power chops like cutoff wheels. So, there's an image up there right now, just kind of looking at it. But that's our big part tool. You know, we want to give thanks to y'all. Like, thanks to our customers that we've got right now. And thank you to the people that are, that are kind of interested, that are kind of on the fence, like, oh, you know, do I want to get one of these cutoff wheels? Do not. Now is the best time to try right here with a 50% off list price of these uh, low power top saw cutoff wheels. Um, but so now it's time to get to the uh, questions and answers part of the uh, program. All right. <clears throat> All right. So our first question comes in from Brad. What grid is best for deburring? Okay. So it's going to depend on the application, what metal you're grinding on. So 
You never want to go below 60 grit, I think you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and you never really want to go, you can, you don't want to go above 120 really. So uh, specifically on aluminum or soft metals, you want to stay on the higher end of that. Um, tool steel, carbon steels, stainlesses, you can go um, towards the 60 grit. So anything more than that, more aggressive that is, it might leave too much of a scratch. It's not going to leave a good finish, that kind of thing. So keep it within that 60 to 120 range, and I think range, and I think you'll be okay. Yeah, that'd be that's a good spot. So the next one came in for you, Danny, and it's from Aaron, and he's wondering what is the difference between a low power chop saw and a stationary saw. Okay, so I know I probably touched base a little bit on this, but so Aaron, great question for that because that's that's when we actually get a lot here because. You know, a lot of people say, well, this really isn't a stationary. I can, you know, I can move it wherever I want to. It's like, I oh, got me. Um, but so for this right here, everything is that horsepower. So if it's four horsepower or more, you're looking at that's what we consider a stationary chop saw machine. But on the other end, if it's less than four horsepower, that's what we consider a low power chop saw. And that's what our wheels are rated for. So going for that. And <clears throat> but yeah, so four and greater, that's what we call our stationary. Less than four, that's our low power chop saw. All right, um, so Eric, got a question for you. Um, how do you know which cutoff wheel to use based on the metal that you were cutting? Actually, that was for me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so, sorry. But, so for this right here, whenever we're looking at the, <laughs> I skipped a question, I'm just gonna let y'all know, that's, that's where this happened from, skip one. Um, reading is, wow. But, <laughs> But, all right, so Eric's question, how do you know which cut of foot to use based on the metal that you were cutting? All right, so, so for this right here, when we're looking at our, uh, <laughs> so, I'm so sorry, our low power chop saws, like for those, it it's all depends on the thickness of the, those right through there. So the thickness of the material that you're cutting, we really don't do as well for like on aluminum, you don't want to use like an A630 and A930 and with aluminum, if you're doing it, pretty much 100% aluminum, it just won't work well. But when we're looking at, you know, your your stainless steel, your mild steel, carbon steel, tool steel, any of that, that's where we're gonna to stick to those properties of the A630N if it's less than an inch. If it's an inch or more, we're gonna go with that A930N. And then the same as we're kind of going into it, you know, with their ultra thin cutoff wheels, I know we've talked about that, but really for this one right here, when we're looking at the low power chop saws, that is it. Um, so, all right. I skipped out a, another question. So Henry, man, I skipped your question, but I'm coming, I'm right back here at it. All right, so what is the lubricant used for? And so basically we've covered it. <laughs> it's just to keep the temperature down. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you're gonna see it on fiber discs, flat discs, belts, whatever the case may be. Um, generally it's gonna be a green color. And that's again, just to keep the temperature down roughly 20%. Um, so I will say we, we lubricate ceramics and zirconias. So if you see a lubricated zirconia, I will say that's generally a little bit better on soft metals, especially in sign shops or aluminum, something like that. And then a lubricated ceramic, it's going to be a more durable. It's for um, your, your higher heat applications like stainless steel where you're doing more heavy grinding. So stainless steel will do better with the ceramic. So I'll okay. say that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and jump to uh, Kevin's question here. So okay. Kevin, this is actually this is a really good question. Why or when would you use a zirconia over a ceramic? I'm going for this, so what do you got for him? So, Again, you can use both. So in, in most metal shops, zirconia is seen as basically a more ba best bang for your buck option. So you can cover a variety of metals. And as I just mentioned, you can um, lubricate it or non-lubricate it. Um, and then ceramic is going to be for your more aggressive durable or for your grinding heavier applications. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll last longer. It's going to be more aggressive, but you will pay a little bit more for the ceramic. So those are your two options. Best bang for your buck or premium, I guess you could say. That's the that's the two there. All right, Danny. So Seymour's asking, when when metalworking, what is your best cutoff wheel? All right, so uh, that's a tough one because lots going to depend on the machinery that we're using um, <clears throat> and kind of what's going on for that. For me personally, if I have to choose one, so I'm going to go to my mm. ultra thin cutoff wheels. It's our A946TZ. Big fan of that one. Um, but if I'm going with the the ones that we've talked about today and the low power chop saw side, so for me, I do use the 14 inch, and and it really just depends on the material that I'm going with. And you know, I feel like I've said it a million times on this episode. I'm so sorry. But if it is less than an inch thick, I'm going to go with that A630N. You know, because and, or and then after that, if it's Greater than an inch, I'm going to go with the A930N because it does have that stability. So whenever I'm pushing down really hard, it's it's able to hold up to that pressure that's going into it. But so yeah, um, I hope that answers your question.
All right, Danny Dale has another one. <laughs> Can you use the cutoff wheel to grind off burrs? Ooh, that's actually a great question. Um, no, it is, it is never recommended to do that. And the reasons why is because, so for the Teflon interlay, it goes into it. It is, uh, I'm so sorry. All right, so for the, uh, the Teflon interlayer that goes into it, it's not meant to be able to grind anything down. It's not meant for that kind of pressure. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right, so it's not meant for that kind of pressure going into it. And so whenever you're kind of grinding down, or whenever you're cutting into it, if you go at a 45 degree angle or <clears throat> that 35 degree angle you're supposed to go to, what you're doing, you're putting the pressure in at that wrong angle. So you definitely don't want to do that. And plus you do have that like to where it could chip or break just because it's not meant for that pressure. It's meant for the pressure to be right on the top, not a, not to have it more in the center of it. Um, so no, you never want to uh, use a cutoff wheel to grind off any burrs, except for we do have a dual wheel, which is actually meant for this. So it has extra Teflon inner layer. It's set up different. It's got different pressure points so you can cut and grind with it. And that is like our TS30 AP. That is a different kind of cutoff wheel than these low power chop saws and are ultra thins that, uh, that I've talked about. But for these chop saws, no. Uh, any kind of true cutoff wheel, you do not want to use it to grind off anything, no. <clears throat> All right, so uh, last question came in from Cal. So he says, I do a bunch of different projects. How can I get in touch with someone to talk about what is the best product for a specific application? So yeah, we have a team in here. We Half of us are for the wood market, half are for the metal market. So you just give us a call in the clinks more abrasives here. We're extension 1273 as a department, or if you call the, the, the main line, we're number six on the call menu. And so both of those are department menus, and you can talk to all four of us about it. Um, or another way to reach us, if you don't want to talk over the phone, um, you can just email us at technical at clingspore.com. And then again, that's a department email. We'll all reach back out to you or who's best suited for it, and then we'll handle mm -hmm. it that way. Yeah, because first, like, we mostly just do the metal side of things. So, like, me and Land, like, you know, for me, I'm in charge of the cutoff wheels, grinding, just that kind of thing. Like, for Landon, he's the SMT, <clears throat> anything else you want to say, SMT carbide burrs. He's, yeah, just, he's a specialty most guy. Most metal other than bonded. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, so, with those, like, we've got that. Whereas the guys that come on for our next episode, they're they're the wood guys, or the, the cool guys on that one. But, um, so, for our next episode we've got coming out, it's going to be March 16th at 3 p.m. That's Eastern time. And uh, they're going to be talking about wide belts. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm guessing they're talking about the abrasive side and different kind of machinery and all that uh, really cool cool stuff for that. So if uh, if you've got a few questions, if you want to get a few questions ready in uh, to send in, feel free to send your questions into techtalk at clingsport.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you've got questions about anything that you know was said here, please go ahead and email in for those. We'll get those answers back to you. But uh, I think that's really all we've got for this episode. I'm Danny Burnett. And I'm Landon Eisenhower. See ya.